All right, guys, ready to go? On you. How do we start these? <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to another <laughs> installment. Yeah, if I'm rowing to another installment of the three dudes, it sounds like an audio book when you say it like that. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to episode 50, the old 50 burger. Fireworks, noises. It's a 5 right there. Every time we say we're going to add sound effects to the show, Never yeah. it's just like Rose, like, and here's the drum roll. Yeah, cue drum roll. Dead sound. Dead sound. <laughs> uh, episode 50 of the three dudes podcast, two episodes away from a year. And actually, we've skipped two weeks, haven't we? Yeah. So this would be a year. This would be about a year, yeah. But yeah, episode fifty-two we'll call a year. Maybe we give ourselves two weeks of leeway per year, fifty a year. I think that's reasonable. I think. Do you guys think we'd get to fifty episodes? We'd be doing this for a year. Yeah, when you I mean, literally put us in the group chat and said we are committed to fifty episodes minimum, <laughs> I thought we were going to get to fifty. That's fair, yeah. Because you are a very driven person in that aspect. So now you guys are free agents. We're going to have to re-sign with the three dudes. Yeah, unless someone else wants it. I'm right here, free agent. Yeah, they pay to get on the show. I paid Liam $2,500 for the next year of the show. I'd take that offer. <laughs> yeah, I'd, do that. I'd quit my job for that. If someone I'd said, I'll, I'll give you $2,500 if I can be in your spot for the three dudes podcast for next year. If someone paid me to take my spot? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> What if all three people paid us $7,500 and it's just three new people for a year and then we're back after a year? Why not? I'd say, yeah, I'd say do it. Yeah. And then, I don't know. I have fun doing this. I do too. I don't think $2,500 would be my number, but I, it would have to go up. Yeah. We I know think, where your loyalties lie. Hey, dude, <laughs> I don't mind a little bit of Exposed. money. That's, yeah, that's fair. Hey, I don't blame you though. It's not hey. disloyalty. I'm just, I like Chase money. that bag. Yeah. You can just be exactly. bought. Our friendship. To you can be paid for. It, we're not saying that we can't do a different podcast. That's true. They take. They start doing the three dudes. We start doing three duds. Few guys. Few guys. <laughs> Simple. As How that. do you say it in uh, Mexican? Tres, tres cumpleaños. Tres amigos. Amigos. Yeah. Or they be friends. What's cumpleaños? Yes, cumpleaños. That's like a birthday. Birthday. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a. Quintanera. No. Feliz cumpleaños. Compadres, that maybe is what you're thinking of? Yes. Uh, yep. Tres compadres. That's what it is. Is that where the padres came from? Com no, padres is Spanish for father, like a priest father. So the San Diego fathers? Yeah, like they, because they, they're like other little, is the friars. Oh, really? Yeah, like sometimes they're called the friars. They should be the fewers. <laughs> yeah, because they kind of suck. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, episode 50. Uh, let's just get right into it. We've got no comments. Uh, apparently people stopped leaving comments on the show, which is, we got maybe a year left and then we're, just, we're done with this. Yeah. <laughs> um, just kidding guys. We love you all. Uh, the Unabomber episode 50, really thinking about the topic today and no one wanted to chime in except Nathan, which is a good chime in. You did, but that was after I'd already picked the Unabomber <laughs> oh, okay. and started I didn't it. Know you so, picked it. No, I already picked it. I was disgruntled there. You said whatever piques my interest and the Unabomber bomber. I love this topic. I did yeah. send in some suggestions. I have a fascination with crazy people like this, I think. Yeah, you do. Just to see how their brain works? Yeah. Like just, what, what were their motives? Why, why did I they give myself this? in this conversation probably every like couple months where like I'll be talking about tragedies. I'm like, ah, I want to experience one. And the people are like, you're crazy, man. Yeah. You like Twin Towers, I wish I was a lot old enough to remember it. You were a year I older mean, than us. Do you remember? No. I don't remember. Dude, the d development of the brain from like ages three i think to four it's very different yeah but i don't remember anything like under eight really maybe under maybe under 15 okay maybe under 12 he doesn't remember anything under how old 20, are you i'm 25 <laughs> so under 25 <laughs> yeah i yeah i have very few recollections yeah that's why it's like i know i was alive during it but i haven't i don't remember it at all well we weren't that old and three. What, what thing like that happened one was well, we're obviously not alive for this because this was in the 90s. But, uh, like, what thing did we live through that we we're old enough to experience? Uh, Osama bin Laden, Las, maybe? Las Vegas shooting. Yeah. Um, COVID. COVID's so dragged out and long, though. Yeah, like something. Yeah. Like, you're talking about just a one time thing. Like a, like one, a big like one. Took the world five by minutes. storm. <laughs> took five. five minutes to accomplish. Yeah. I'm actually I'm watching the 11 minute documentary right now about that Las Vegas shooting. So oh, is it on? What's it on? Paramount Plus. The it's eleven minutes long, like the documentary. That's what it's called. It's, it's called. titled Eleven Minutes because I think 
I, was I, say, I how think that was yet? that was the entire duration of what happened, like from first shots fired until they found him and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, the Boston Marathon bombing. Oh, that's true. We were live for that. Yeah, that was 2013, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, there's actually a documentary on that. Didn't we talk about that on the? Yeah, show you were saying that it was really good. Manhunt. Yeah, that was pretty cool. See, like it's hard to say something like that. That was cool. Uh, Which is Sandy like it Hook, wasn't. I don't little mean interesting. It. Yeah, Sandy Hook. It's just what would be the word you would use for that? That it was interesting to be alive during that time. It was rememberable. Remarkable. Remarkable. Memorable. Memorable is good. Yeah. It was memorable because it's not cool. Yeah. But it's like a shitty version of euphoria. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say euphoria, <laughs> but like a bad version of it. It was like heaven if you were really messed up. Yeah. yeah. It was like heaven for, for Easton. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. A tragedy. Uh, but no, it's just like interesting to watch those things. You know, it's like, holy shit. Yeah. Like things, we, it's like things you open, have to open your eyes for. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you don't realize how bad it was or the extent of it and stuff. Like I'd like the Las Vegas shooting happened and I all but blanked that from my memory the week after. So I said, oh, it happens. I almost don't even remember that. Me either. Yeah. What was it? I don't, I, I'm watching the documentary. I couldn't even tell you when it was. I forgot now. 2019, I think. Was it? Or 18. The Mandalay Bay thing? Yeah. yeah. Nathan? I thought that, yeah, I thought that was Your earlier first than that. Mandalay Bay shooting. Yeah. Because um, there's a cool podcast episode that goes second by second describing it. We listened to it. Yeah, we did. It's really good. But yeah, Unabomber. Um, Nathan, just chime in once you find that. But uh, the Unabomber, you guys know who that was? Bro, obviously said he does. Yeah. yeah. Ted? Familiar? Yeah. His name is Ted. Theodore. Ted. Some, uh, Nerwinski. Close. Really close. Really good. Yeah. Is it Lewinsky. Oh, L. Yeah. Lewinsky. Lewinsky. Yeah. Uh, His sister was Monica. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, no it, wasn't. it wasn't. Don't do that to me. <laughs> I, think, got, I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> That's a lot. Vegas. Man- V-E-G-E-S. Are you serious? No, you said. Oh. Mandalay. You yeah. can just type in Las Vegas shooting and it'll pop up. Oh. You, you spent. Mandalay. Do you Bay. have wait, wait, autocorrect wait. on that? You spent the last three minutes just trying <laughs> to spell. <laughs> Yeah, he, you he know lo- what? Before this episode started, we said, you know what? We might be nice to Nathan in this episode. <laughs> it was 2017. 2017. 2017, okay. Yeah. Year after I graduated. Andrew Goodmanson was there. Lives in Minot. You know who that is? Uh, well, I'm watching this with Carolyn, and she knows someone who got shot. Likely and him. He was in the Vegas hospital he, for like yeah, three months. So yeah. I'm pretty sure it was him. Yeah. Which is crazy. crazy. Yeah. Crazy, man. Crazy guy from mine at the music festival. Yeah. Got shot. Wrong place, wrong time. Wasn't it like country music? Like, yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was, no, it was, no, it was, it was a country music festival. Yeah. So but Jason one, Aldean it was, was during playing. the Jason Aldean concert. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if there's one, you're going to shoot up. No, Jason, come on. You don't like Jason Aldean? <laughs> it was a country or music. country music. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it's fine. Nerd. I listen to it <laughs> sometimes here and there, but yes, Ted Kaczynski is his name. So it did start with a K. Yes. Uh oh. You See, you were messing with him saying it was Lewinsky. And I was like, and then you actually did say is it. Ted. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was remembering like, oh, it shit. wrong. Ted Lewinsky. <laughs> Ted Lewinsky. Uh, so Ted uh, Kaczynski is the person. Unabomber. Do you know what that stands for? No. A Unabom. It's actually an acronym. U-N-A-B-O-M. B-O-M. Yep. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Una. So that stands for one. Uh, no, university and airline. Uh, so UN is from university and then A is airline, airline. bomber. Because mm-hmm. all of his things, bombs are sent to universities and airliners, people that worked at the airline. Oh, so shit. that's why they called him the Unabomber, which is kind of a cool name. Yeah. Like, I'm, pretty badass. That's the yeah. thing you got to think about. If you're going to be like one of these people, what is your nickname going to be down the road, you know? But he didn't give that to himself. No, he didn't. But you got to like, I don't, he's probably like, ah, universities, I, how, airlines, how they might this? be able to put something cool in here for yeah. me. Yeah. Just like son of Sam, you know? So he's doing it for the clout. Yeah. You got to. I don't know what else you do that for. <laughs> for the clout? Why else do you blow up a lot of people? Because you are demented. Yeah. Get so, yeah. That would be, I'm sure we'll find out why here later this episode, <laughs> actually. Uh, so. This was a code name for the FBI gave to the case before the bomber's identity was known. Uh, Kaczynski's first known bomb was sent in May of 1978 
and was targeted at a professor at Northwestern University, and subsequent early bombs targeted university professors and airline flights, giving rise to the FBI code name. Um, Kaczynski eventually identified as the Unabomber, and the, the search lasted two decades. Two decades? Two, yep, 20 wow. years. So they knew who it was, but couldn't find the guy? Uh, no, I don't think they knew for a while. Oh. Like, they didn't, like, it was towards the end that they found out who it was. And like, then, the very end. And then they got, got him. him. He, they didn't know who it was for 20 years. Oh, I thought they knew who it was, and this man was just on the run for 20 years, evading tons of no. federal agents. That would be That'd crazy. That'd be awesome. Yeah. He's just the Barry Sanders of you're on <laughs> you're on El Chapo levels of evading. If that were the case, he would be my favorite bad person. I also <laughs> I like the idea of having a favorite bad people. I think that's a good conversation starter, which I think I'm gonna add. Like a new oh, group man. of people. You have your favorite bad person. Everyone's everyone's got their favorite <laughs> superhero. Who's your favorite villain? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but, but like real I, villain. But I feel like if you say villain, people automatically think like, oh, penguin. From Batman. Yeah. You got to say, who's your favorite bad person? Yeah. Like bad. And they're like John Wayne Gacy. Oh, the clown killer. Yeah. You want to know why they call? I found this out like last week, why they call serial killers and bad people by first, middle, and last. You want to take a guess? Is it so people with other, if John Wayne Gacy, other John Gacy's don't get shit on for it? Correct. Yeah. That's what I figured. They call him John Wayne Gacy. So then... If our producer, is if that Nathan like, Couture was a serial killer, he wouldn't. People wouldn't be like, "Oh, you're the fucking serial killer." Right? It's like, no, it's Nathan Eric Couture. That's the serial killer. I don't know if we're quite safe yet, but I have like the most generic name besides my last name. Nathan. So you're fifty fifty on generic, yeah, yeah. Like oh, if you were, Nathan or James they're just going to start calling him by first names now. John, <laughs> John, the bad guy. John. But yeah, but Evil I'd say John. generic would be like a John Smith or like a Tim Anderson. You know what a better way to do that would be? Do it by their nickname. Yeah. Nickname, not the killer. person. But then no one knows who their, what their real name is. Well, it's like everybody knows Osama bin Laden by Osama. I get where you yeah. go. I get where you're going at, but. I'm going to name my kid Unabomber Bennett. And they'll be like, he just goes by the nickname. <laughs> he doesn't go by Ted. You have No, you have <laughs> to name him. His name is Ted. University yeah. <laughs> and Airlines. <laughs> What's your name? He's University and Airlines Bomber Bennett. <laughs> Bomber Bennett. That'd be a good name, actually. Um, what does he go by? And it's just, it's kind of like a TJ, you know? He just yeah. goes by Unabom. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, all right. Where was I at here? Oh, connection between the code name and Kaczynski. I'm going to struggle with that. This whole episode is significant because it represents one of the most prominent domestic terrorism cases in U.S. history where highly educated individual used bombings as means to express his anti-technology and anti-industrialization views. So that's why he was doing this shit. He's hated technology. So do you think these professors were technology professors? Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, not why were they professors? No, I mean, like, why? Why the anti-technology? It doesn't make really sense. He to me. thought it was like taking over the world. He thought it's, like yeah, if we do technology, point, yeah, yeah. So honestly, we kind of, I kind of jive with Ted. Yeah, I think in his manifesto, like I think he was onto something. You think we should have less technology? I think we should have more Ted's in today's age. Minus the the bomb part, I think is what he's getting at. Or more radical movement people. I don't know if we, yeah, I don't know if we need to be quite that radical. Bombs in a shed. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't <laughs> we need more, we need more bombers. We need, we're, world's running out of bombers. More murders, please. Yeah. <laughs> world's running out of bombers. If you're we listening to this, them. yeah, get in your shed right now. <laughs> yeah. Start crafting something up. Yeah. If what? you got these in high school, wasn't this dude like insanely smart? Like, yeah. A super high IQ. Went like, to Harvard. Yeah. At age like 16. Really? Yeah. We'll get into it. Um, he was a mathematician. Um, the name Unabomber has stuck and been widely used by the media and the public to refer to Kaczynski. Refer to Kaz- K-Dog. You yeah. can just call him K-Dog. K-Dog. Ted. I'll Ted, call him Ted. Ted. Yeah, just go Ted. It is now almost inseparable from Kaczynski's persona and his actions that span from the late 70s to the mid 90s. That's crazy. 20 years is still a horribly long time. Mm-hmm. 
All right. So Ted was a brilliant. I feel like when I call him Ted, like I'm befriending him, though. Me and Ted. Uh, Ted was a brilliant mathematician. You guys don't understand. Yeah. yeah. He was just misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He wasn't all that bad. Yeah, if you just got down to sat and know the guy a little bit. Yeah. You know? uh, brilliant mathematician who grew increasingly delusioned with modern society and technological advancement. He developed a strong conviction that industrialization and talk. Oh, I can't talk today, guys. I feel like I have a cat in my mouth. Me too. Like talking with peanut butter in your mouth. Like, my like mouth I, is really yeah, dry. Like I need to go to like a speech, like one of those special classrooms. Like a speech pathologist? Yeah, when you get taken out of your real class. We know a couple. Yeah. Or soon to be. Yeah. They should figure out what's going on in my mouth. Right now. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll do it for them. <laughs> yeah. I volunteer. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll see about yeah. that. He said it was eroding. God, my arm is mangled here. This is a struggling. You, yeah, you long. are going through the trenches right now. It's been a while since I've done the notes. I almost forgot how to do them. It's my water. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said that it was eroding human freedom and destroying the planet. Uh, he oh abandoned. God. He abandoned his position as assistant professor of mathematics at the University of California, Berkeley. Isn't there a name for that? Or UCLA, call, or no? That's they just call it Berkeley. Kelly Berkeley. UC Berkeley, I think is what UC, they call it. Yeah. Uh, when he was 27 years old, he was a professor there. That is ridiculous. Yep. Uh, he was opting for a simpler life, bro. Moved to a remote 1.4 yeah. acre plot of land near Lincoln, Montana, where he built a small primitive cabin without electricity or running water. Really? Something's got to like, you got to see the light. At I some jive point. with that. A little bit. I always think to myself, I like, that. I would love to just be remote. Yeah. Like an uncontacted tribe, but it's just me. I'd do it for like three months. I could, long. I think I could. I'd, I'd be like, I'd do it as like a vacation, like for the year. Like I'd cabin in the woods, nothing there. When and would I you just, get mad or mad? scared? When would I, what do you, uh, mad? mad? I get mad all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I get mad now. <laughs> I'm going to be less mad when I have less things around yeah. me to be mad Because then when I get mad out there, I'm just going to grab an axe and go start hitting a tree. You can still do that. Yeah. Here in town. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, because I look at it like at what point am I probably quickly for me, would I be like, ah, this sucks. I don't have that thing. I need to do this. Like I think what? it's different for everybody. Yeah. I mean, like I, a I, toilet. The world is your toilet, man. Poop, dude, yeah, just poop. Do you but think I'd be like, ah, oh, this was so much easier when I wasn't out here? Well, that's the whole point is you got to decide what you like and what's easier want, and what's yeah. not. I mean, guys like me or Brolin that would consider it, <laughs> I'll dig a hole and poop in that hole. And <laughs> I dude, go, cool. I'll poop in the garden and start fertilizing. It's, I mean, like, it's, everything's got a use. You guys just have no problem with shitting outside. I think that's the difference no. between us, yeah. Nah, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I don't care. I'd almost prefer it. <laughs> Pete outside a lot this weekend, folks. Yeah. Right? I was wondering what that big hole in your front yard is. Poop hole. Poop hole. <laughs> <laughs> the bro's like, I've been digging that for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's actually a Vietnam trap. I got a fake grass laid over the top of it. I can't wait <laughs> for Halloween, dude. Yeah. Yeah. The neighborhood kids. kids. Yeah. 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 Uh surprise your bro's mom's gonna come over there, steal it all, put it in her bags. All our poop, the poop bag. Yeah, yeah. Microwave it. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, bro, will be sitting there with that bowl of candy on his lap. Oh man, good for a good you. time. Not the laffy taffy again. Uh, in isolation, Ted's views further radicalized. He began to envision a world free from the clutches of technology and industrial society. A vision that he tried to propagate through a bombing campaign. I campaign. Feel like, yeah, he was I feel out like there in the streets. It. With a picket sign, just campaigning for bombs. Yeah. I feel like he was like a social media, like marketing campaign. He's like, yeah. this is my bombing campaign. I'm going to go through and get this. We're bringing awareness. Yeah. <laughs> it's a GoFundMe. Help me make these bombs. People are going to be aware. <laughs> Help me kill these people. Yeah. How old is this guy? 27 when he left UCA. Was, was UC he like a Berkeley. grandpa or something? Well, huh? 27 like a, when he left and then 20 years later. So he was 47. When he was probably caught around there, 45 to 50. 55. Yeah. Because I was going to say, this guy just sounds like most grandpas. Yeah. And you're always on that damn phone. And he was, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's even bombs a, in their sheds. That's a crazier thought. He was 27 when he went on this, found this epiphany of fuck technology. That's right around our age. Yeah. Just a couple of years older. 
So you imagine in a couple of years, you get really mad years, at TikTok? I might. I'm mad at it now. <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to bomb anyone Yeah, for but it. you're it's not writing gonna... any manifestos, right? Exactly, yeah. I'm well, not. I'm we not... don't know. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's starting to blossom. Oh, well, we are. I'm getting some ideas. But there we go. See? This is just a... Uh, this is the next spark into the, new, <laughs> into the new evolution of bombers that we have. You said we didn't. Our, ha- we didn't say we didn't have enough. Yeah, this is. I'll be the spearhead. Found our next yeah. LeBron. You here. are the cigarette butt into the forest fire. Yeah. You, <laughs> Liam's gonna going. be amongst the likes of Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> amongst the likes, <laughs> who's the one Longer. Oklahoma bomber? Oh, Oklahoma. Oh, I can't remember his name. Um, it was uh, God, I really want to know it now. Nathan, who who did the OKC bombings? I'm gonna be pissed when I hear this. I want to say it's something like pretty generic. It is. He's a white guy. Straight as us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, all right, Nathan, you find that. 17 years, Kaczynski mailed and delivered 16 bombs, resulting in the deaths of three people and injuring 23 others. What's up, Nathan? What's his name? Timothy McVeigh. Yep. yep. God, I knew it started with a Mick something. I didn't know that, but ah, <laughs> you guys want to know that. Left, yeah, yeah, you could have left it there. Uh, uh, no, because I was like, I can't so, lie. Tim and Ted. Tim and Ted. <laughs> you got a T name. You're bound for great things. I guess I'm out. Yeah. yeah. My middle name's Thomas. Well, that's why, hey, that's why you you're know? the spearhead. Yeah. Exactly. For the L, L name bad L. guys. Yeah. Tosama bin Laden. Let's rise up. <laughs> he wasn't very good. No, not a bad guy. Yeah. Good time. He was misunderstood. So only three people got killed. Yeah, which seems low, doesn't it? It does seem really low. From when you talk, the these must be weak bombs. Unless yeah. these are some resilient. Are men. they fart bombs? Or like, <laughs> yeah, stink, stink bombs. bombs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got to send them in the mail. So I mean, you can't really send like a huge crate. It doesn't have to be a big crate. Yeah. You can make it. You can make a bomb. I suppose that, a grenade could kill you. And that's, not that I would know. So I've heard. Trust me, you could fit it in. A, here's all you need. Too. Here's the supplies. <laughs> yeah. If you really or so to I'm try told. It. Yeah, or so I'm told. <laughs> um, yeah, they must have been not great. No, they're still injuring people. Did he get any of his targets? Three. He killed three people and injured twenty three others. Is that but what were they, was he trying to kill those people, or was it just he was probably trying to kill all of them? <laughs> I'd imagine. Yeah, I, don't I don't think, think he making, cared. I'm gonna make an injury bomb here. Yeah, I think after like the 16th one of someone getting injured, why didn't he just scratch his head and go, "Maybe I should beef these things up a little bit"? Yeah, he's yeah. like, "I can't get the job done here." Yeah. Well, he probably had no idea because he was technology free, so he just said, <laughs> "I'm waxing them all." He has no idea <laughs> that he, he just they just got paper cuts when they open up this bomb. Everyone explodes. I'm like, he's checking off another one down. Yeah, I can't um, stop me. <laughs> Uh, so that along with his manifesto industrial society and its future, that's what it was called known commonly as the Unabomber manifesto sparked one of the largest and most expensive investigations in FBI history. So here's his bombing history. First bomb, 1978 at Northwestern university. It injures a security guard who tries to open the package. So first one failed attempt 1979, a year later. Bomb sent to an American Airlines flight fails to detonate, detonate, but fills, night. <laughs> fails to detonate. I told you I'm struggling today, man. Um, fails to detonate, but fills the plane with smoke. Still did it. <laughs> did I? Detonate. Yeah. Yeah. Detonate. A little bit. Yeah. A little, a little bit. bit. Uh, <laughs> It blew up, it failed to, <laughs> and fills the plane with smoke. It boom. Didn't boom. <laughs> Imagine somehow successfully getting a bomb on a plane. I suppose this is before 9 11, so you can bring yeah. whatever you want on there. Yeah, you could probably bring a full Sherman tank onto a plane <laughs> before then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my tank. I'm just going to hope you don't mind. You want me to check this? <laughs> what is you the, I put this up top. What are the things in Call of Duty? The uh, They drive around, it's got a name. Thanks. No, it's smaller. RCXD? No, nope, bigger. Hmm. It's like a a Wilson. A Wilson? A Wilson? <laughs> I think that's what's what? called. What? No, that sounds like. Not. Yes. What? No. no. Put twenty dollars on it. A Wilson. Each. Wilson. Nathan probably knows. Look at this guy. Oh fuck See, I yeah! I didn't want to ask. There thank you. Um, Nathan, you just give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you know this already. But is a Wilson in Call of Duty a thing? Okay, you looking funny, so just Google it. I thought you could just. That was the most 
Yeah, Lost like he saw a deer ghost. in headlights look <laughs> I've ever seen. The thousand mile gaze. It's like he just heard your voice, but nobody was there. He was just like. <laughs> your mouth was moving, no words. Wilson, come on, come on. Come Wilson. On. Wilson. Dude, that's not it. W H E E L S O N. Go fuck Coconut. It. The coconut on Castaway. Oh, Wilson? Wilson. <laughs> Owen just... Wilson. <laughs> oh, God. He's getting his fucking headphones on. Here, Here we is. go, baby. There is a Wilson is a remote controlled drone. There we go. And does it it's drive a, around on the ground? It's a drone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I blanked that part out. Selective <laughs> hearing. Uh, Wilson. Get it. Type in Wilson COD. That's what I'm looking for. That's COD at the end. But and then flip a picture because I know what it looks like. And it's not a drone. Gosh, I'm so excited to see this. I, I have no con? idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I must have stopped Most. playing. Uh, not true. Only th- Unless I, they I'm call it something else. A, a warthog wheels. from Halo. A Wilson. I Is never it got like that? Him. No, I was so jealous because I never got him. A Wilson? Yeah, Is it I a kill streak? Yeah, I couldn't oh. get that many kills. Be better. A Wilson right there. Boom. Oh, I remember that thing. That was like in the shitty CODs though. Sucked, dude. You couldn't fucking break them. What I'm, that was like? What that was like? Call of Duty Ghosts. Like after we never stopped. played it. Mm, yeah, it was on shipment for sure. Remember that <laughs> was tiny it, map? Was it COD Four? No. Modern Warfare Two. What? No, no, it was, it was not, not a Modern Warfare Two. Hundred percent. Like the second one, probably. Not not in multiplayer. There's no way there the was second a second one. Not the original MW Two. Oh, what? Yeah, that yeah, the, the shitty newer, the one. Newer one. Yeah, yeah, the I one that just that. came out. That I we, stopped. I. That's about the time I. Had Put down the controller. Yeah. Black Ops 2, I think, is the last COD that I really got into. Yeah. Yeah. I just couldn't break that thing, man. It kept killing me and killing me and killing me. And I was like, what the fuck is this thing? And I was like, it's a Wilson. <laughs> Wilson. Yeah. And it's you're just starting like, to wake I, up screaming, Wilson. No, because. Just cold it. sweat coming down your forehead. When you're playing the game, you know how they have like the people talking over it? Yeah. Like enemy RCXD inbound, right? You would always say enemy Wilson. And it sounded like Wilson. And then I finally like went and looked at the kill streak and it was a Wilson. Enemy Wilson. And I was like, oh, it's a Wilson. Oh. What, yeah. d- there's got to be a better name for that than Wilson. What would you call it? Wilson with an I. Okay. That's Great, better. But we could do better. What about you? Uh, shooty wheels. <laughs> <laughs> that one's good too. Uh, <laughs> we have our winner. Enemy, <laughs> enemy shooty wheels. And shooty now. wheels. <laughs> Shooting on wheels, man. Uh, you got to watch out. They'll get you. <laughs> um, all right. So 1979, the second bomb. Uh, November 1979, bomb at Northwestern University injures a grad student. And oh. then. What kind of bomb? Just like a box bomb. Like you, it's in a box. And the grad student tried to open it or what? Yeah, they all came in like packages. So then once you open the package. They blew. Oh. I, I wonder like how. Cardboard box. Quick for scientific reasons. We could learn. To build a bomb. By tonight. 100% by the end of the night. I was just talking to somebody else about like, I kind of want to make my own landmines. I think I think it could be done. You were talking to some. Could I ask who? Uh, <laughs> Not for me. He, I mean, they told me I can't release his name, but he he's on a all expense a paid vacation in a padded room for the rest of his life. So. <laughs> Actually? No, what? Oh, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'd do that. I just want to build it and not use it. It's well, kind of like a party trick. That? Or maybe just use it a little bit. For bad guys? <laughs> yeah, we'll use it. We'll, we'll reverse Unibomb. Oh, we we'll, bomb the Unibombers. Yeah, yeah we, we bomb the we're shitties. The, we are the good guys. Yeah. What vigilantes. Is that a vig- yes, I was just going to say a vigilante. Isn't Batman a vigilante? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like one I of like the best. that word a lot. I also like <laughs> law by... One of <laughs> Top <laughs> three. One of, one of, yeah, he's one of the best vigilantes. Are you kidding me? Look at all the everything he's done. <laughs> Look at all his stuff. Yeah. He's fought the Joker 48 times. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get that guy. You just can't. It's, Somehow. That's Batman's Wilson. Yeah. He's the Joker. He's just trying. <laughs> he's just <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> Wilson, dude. Again? Yeah. What's up, dude? Um, does the bomb have to like explode or can it just be something that activates that kills a lot of people? The bomb would have to explode. I like exploding, but it's not necessary on my checklist because if it activates so then how does it kill the people i'm a refrigeration technician so i deal with refrigerants all day and 404a (laughs) 
<laughs> if you burn it, it turns into phosgene gas. Oh, I see what you're so saying. So if I put a tank of that, like a that's smoke bomb, now it's chemical and basically, weapons. hypothetically speaking, yeah, hypothetically, if this happened, I would we uh, would never do this. Put a valve on it, and the valve would open, and I'd have a torch that just activated. So all the air that comes out of it gets burned, turning into phosgene gas, filling up a whole room with phosgene gas. And isn't that, isn't that the shit that like literally the guy that? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? You guys keep going. No, I kind of want to hear this. No, I can't say it on the show. Patreon. I'll tell you yeah, Patreon it. episode. Isn't that like the stuff that displaces oxygen in the room? Well, anything, like any refrigerant suffocate? displaces oxygen. Yeah. But the phosgene shit is like really that's potent, like a isn't it? chemical that's yeah. dangerous to you. This phosgene smells like phosgene. What is it? Schnozberries. Schnozberries. Yeah. Tastes like schnozberries. Phosgene's a cool name. That's like a... I can name my kid that. Foz Jean Bennett. Mm-hmm. I'd call him Foz. You could just call him the Foz. Yeah. The Foz. Fez. The Foz. Fez. Pez. Oh. That uh, reminds me of Pez dispensers. Um, June 1980, a bomb mailed to a home of United Airlines President Percy Wood injures him. He's just, he, his first four were just injuries. First five. Mm-hmm. I think For he six, started to dial it down. Was he yeah, just he trying to send out warnings or he, what? He must have. He's bringing awareness. Because <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna Stop be out with this. the planes. <laughs> yeah, no I'm more gonna... electronics. Yeah. <laughs> um, a bomb injures a Utah University of Utah graduate student. A bomb injures a Vanderbilt secretary. A uh, professor at University of California Berkeley is injured by a bomb left in the university's computer science building. Bomb mailed to University of California, Berkeley, injures a grad student. President of computer store in Sacramento is killed by a bomb. There we go. Took him one for 20. seven years. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. His ninth bomb was lethal. What is, so between those nine bombs, what's the timeline right now currently? Seven years. So 1978 was the first one. His ninth one was 1985. He's been at this for a while. Yeah. So he's years. not. he's not just... Good at He's not bombs. making like 10 of them and then dropping them all off at UPS and saying, here you guys go. I got uh, Christmas. Correct. This year. So. Three or two in 79, two in 90 or in 82, and then two in 85. Those mm-hmm. are the only ones with multiple per year. And 1993, which mm-hmm. he went, he was going good. Was he going ape shit? He was, <laughs> he figured it out. <laughs> he cracked the code there. Um, yeah, but 1985 is first lethal one. President of a computer store. I uh, left the bomb in a parking lot, making it the Unabomber's first lethal attack. Did you have that, something, Nathan? When, like, I'm younger than all you guys. So when he first started talking about the Unabomber, I was thinking, like, it was something recent. Because, like, I don't even remember 9-11. Yeah. Neither do we. Oh, so you thought it was, like, 2000s. Yeah. So I was thinking 2000s. Like, they were coming after, like, the dudes, like, oh, Apple phones and, like, all that stuff. No. Oh. He was talking about these computer-sized fucking in rooms. Big He's, computers. He's, yeah, he's like pissed at airplanes. He's pissed at airplanes like, okay. and he's trying to take out computer stores. That is just. So this dude's like barbaric. You're missing the mark here, pal. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's mad at like quicker travel. Which is insane. He's bring all about the, the Chevrolet horses. <laughs> yeah. At what point is he just hand delivering these bombs? <laughs> I mean, if you, if you want to go back that far. Honestly, yeah. Because. He was probably, this is just we'll, around when mail started being a thing. We'll be done with automobiles completely then. <laughs> I walked the bomb halfway across the country, dude. Um, 1987. So two years after he killed someone, it took him two years. He's like, holy fuck, I got to figure out what I just did. Yeah. R- replicate it. Uh, 1987, a bomb left behind a computer store in Salt Lake City. He Maybe he thought the computer stores were not a thing. He's like, they only kill people there. Uh, a witness sketches a hooded figure which becomes the first composite sketch of the Unabomber. So he was Hooded he was delivering it. Oh, with intent. He was really walking the walk and talking the talk then. He had a conviction. Yeah, which is good, you know? You don't admire, just, you don't admire that from a like bad a guy. coward, yeah. Yeah, drop it off. Yeah. You want to do it? It's like a mayday Be basket. a man. Yeah, be a man. Be a man about it. It is kind of like a mayday basket. Because it goes off and people are like, mayday, mayday. Oh, is man. that for ships only? That's for airplanes and helicopters. Mayday? Yeah. What does that mean? You sure? Yeah, like when choppers are going down, the guy's screaming mayday. I suppose. What about when it's, Oh, it's, it must be things that are going down, like if a ship's going down. 
It doesn't have to be. It could yeah. just be danger. Mayday. I don't know. What is, yeah, Nathan, can you look that up? What does Mayday mean on airplanes? And Yeah. He's already on top of it. This guy. He's like, oh, I found this it. Guy. It sounds like the French word mater, which means help me. Hmm. Help. That gives cars <laughs> a whole different meaning. Ah. <laughs> So Toe is just a really sad guy. Sad dude, yeah. Quick side note. This past weekend, Liam and I were... Oh. Wrong button. Sorry. You're good. Are we good? Yeah. Liam and I were in the Black Hills golfing a bunch, for those of you that don't know. Golfing and uh, we would just randomly scream bloody murder and go, help, help, somebody. And in, in the hills, yeah. Yeah, just anywhere In, in we the were. hills, especially. Uh, in the couple, neighborhood. In the, yeah, in the neighborhood. A couple of courses, they had like uh, tunnels that would go underneath the road to get to the other side of the course. We'd go inside that tunnel and just start screaming our heads off. Just middle of a casino. Help, help. I thought about it. I like that. It, but like it was. Tell you the boy who Afterwards, wolf. I'm going to see if Liam, if I can get Liam to do it. So you can hear how he does it and how real it is. <laughs> like you, I can, I can. Explain. How you can think help is actually needed. Yeah, that's fair. Desperation in the voice. <laughs> it's Patreon. Yep, Patreon episode. Um. All right. So, geneticist at uh, University of California, San Francisco, injured by a mail bomb, making a shift in the Unabomber's targets towards individuals associated with technology. So it took him fifteen years before he's like, ah, frick. Going I've narrowed down my target audience. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, ah, oh, let's go for these tech gurus. He's probably uh, just driving himself insane in the hills. And then he's like, how am I going to do this? Another computer scientist at Yale uh, is injured. 95 Unabomber. The Unabomber's final and deadliest attack occurs when a bomb mailed to the president of a timber industry lobbying group kills him at his office in San Francisco. That was his final one. And that was the deadliest. It killed one guy. Yeah. The same as the other ones. Must have killed him bad, though. Must, yeah. Must, must like turned him into ground beef. Extra then. killed him. Yeah. <laughs> killed him twice. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Limbs. Super killed. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know. Like maybe blew maybe a hole first, through the other side of his office. Yeah. Then, then. Maybe the first couple like got injured, went to the hospital, died at the hospital. This guy was... In smithereens. Yeah. Smithereens. <laughs> what a word. <laughs> I haven't heard the word smithereens in I don't know how long. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Blew him to smithereens. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are smithereens? <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> oh, God. We give him the best words to Google, too. <laughs> it's really throwing him a curveball here. <laughs> and it's pretty disappointing. It's actually just small pieces. I like That's smithereens. The How do they call it that, though? Where did that figure out where that Origin. came from? Circa etymology. <laughs> Circa. Circa 1942. When it started, yeah. There we go. Uh, from the Irish word smitterin, which <laughs> is the... Even better for you. Diminutive <laughs> form of simodar, which means fragment. Huh, nice. So it means it just because it means it, basically. Yeah. It Figure is out when exactly people started saying it. that. I want to know. Most keep, popular I'm going to get him down this Google rabbit hole here. <laughs> okay, Nathan, now go here. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Unabomber's Smithereens. manifesto. Smithereens. Fuck, that's an awesome word. <laughs> uh, that'd be a good kid's name. <laughs> These are all great. Like, what was he calling? Fogene? Fosgene? Fosgene Smithereens. I'm going to name, name my first kid Smith. Middle name, Areens. <laughs> Areens. <laughs> Smith Bennett. What's your middle name? Areens. Areens. Smithereens better. <laughs> Smithereens. <laughs> uh, Smithereens Owens is better. That does actually kind of have a ring to it. I'm going to name my next kid Bo. Middle name Dacious. Uh, we, could Foz, do, we could do this with a lot. Foz Gene. Gene's a fine middle name. He could go by Gene. That's ah, actually my middle name. What's your first name? Foz. <laughs> Foz Gene. Never Gene Smithereen. <laughs> 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 they can call him the Bean, Gene the Bean Smithereen, yeah, or something like that, or Gene Smithereen the Bean Owens, yeah, awfully keen, isn't he? He's the main machine, <laughs> yeah. He he's just always seen, eats his greens. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, everyone listening to this. We're, we're yeah. sorry. 
Can't wait to see the chart on this one. Viewer drop off. <laughs> uh, what was the Unabomber manifesto? You guys know. I burned it. Yeah. That's actually where, how I thought it to do this episode. I went to our YouTube channel. I was just scrolling through our episodes. And our header is you hold the Unabomber manifesto. And I was really? Like, Unabomber, let's do it. Yeah. That's really cool. I suppose it would uh, just be him talking about why he did it. Pretty much, yeah. It's more so why he is doing it because he was writing it as as he was doing it. He wasn't caught yet. So yeah. this is like a diary almost. Pretty much. 35,000 pages. Holy or, shit. No, 35,000 words. Oh, oh, thank God. Yeah. God, did I have you guys puckered up? Good <laughs> grief, man. Both of you guys. 35,000. That's like yeah. 17 encyclopedias. How many pages are in a dictionary, I wonder? Isn't it? <laughs> Come on. Last one. Open a new tab. What are you looking up? No, he's the when they started when using they started saying it. Probably when cannonballs were shooting through people's chests in yeah. World War, or whatever. Yeah. Civil War. We're going to turn these blokes into smithereens. Man the cannons, boys. Uh, I want to do an episode on the Civil War and the Revolutionary War. Home, You're talking home field wars. Yeah. So, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Went the French-Indian War. We weren't in that one. Yeah, we were. We'll just call it, we'll call it Border Wars. Episode Border Wars. Yeah, everything inside the country. French Indian War happened in the United States before pre country. Um, before we were over here. No. There were pilgrims oh, here. It happened during pilgrim time. Like Maybe the a little colony after. Time? Yeah, colonies. I like the thirteen colonies too. I don't know why I like them so much. I just want to be friends with John Smith, I think. John Smith. <laughs> John Smith. <laughs> Maybe that's easy shortened. I can't find the use over there. That's fine. That's use. fine. What was the other one you wanted? Are you talking out of your fucking tits? <laughs> Why? You what does it matter if I'm here or here? Because it picks up from the nipple of the mic. Uh Oh, free the nip. Yeah. Oh, hey. We're rising against Big T. Yeah. We had a conversation last Taylor night. Taylor Swift? No. no. Big t-shirt industry. Like uh, big what? pharma, but big T. <laughs> yeah, we're done. We're done wearing t-shirts. Yep. Today's our last day. I was going to say. Today, 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 today's so, our last day. Yeah, today's Movement right. starts tomorrow. So We're what just, are you going to wear instead? Nothing. Crop tops? No. Nothing. nothing. Free your upper body. Nothing. For, for moderately every, in shape. For man. every man out there that's moderately in shape, tarps off. Yeah. Big T has had <laughs> men everywhere <laughs> by the short and curlies. <laughs> By the short and curly. Why do they say short and curly? That refers to pubes, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Had us for too long. I wonder. We're uh, rising against. Yeah. Now, this is going to be the first time that people have broke barriers. I didn't know we were doing a PSA. In the <laughs> Actually, I've been meaning to get this off my chest. Yeah. So you're yeah. rising. Okay. I'm meaning to get your this floor, off my curlies yeah. for a while. Yeah. The floor is still yours. No, I just stopped wearing t-shirts. Yeah. What, what, what do they do we're for done, you? We're done giving our money. Embrace your skin. Tea. Yeah. You guys if, trim your armpit hair? No. Nope. Nope. Do you? No. Okay. Are you lying? Sure. I don't know. Dead serious. You but I had a conversation. It? What did you say? You ever tried shaving your armpit no, hair? No. Do you, no. Nathan? I tried it one time. And? Because right. I saw a kid, I think it was in high school, who like didn't have any hair. I was like, well, apparently that's the thing now. So I tried it. And it was the worst experience of my life because like the first day, it's fine. But like imagine when you back. shave your beard and like you have the pricklies, but it's rubbing inside your arm the so entire So did you, day. did you try to like straight razor it? No, I just like took my razor from my face and just. Yeah. So straight, straight razor. razor. Like or did you use it? a trimmer or like, like a, a zzz, or did you use a. I don't know many <laughs> curved razors, but. What? Curved razors. Oh, what man, are you talking man. about? A straight razor, those razors inside of your thing you do on your face. To me, straight. a straight razor is just the one blade. No, there's a there's a name for that, but it's not yeah. that. I should know that because I just used one an you, hour ago. You use one? You use those? Single blade, yeah. Why? Wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I feel like more man. No, no particular That's why I feel reason like whatsoever. Is, oh, that crystal here. Wanted. To. Wanted. To. <laughs> wanted. To. I feel like people do that just like same just people to that say they do. Yeah, it. same people that own trailers. What? Huh? Yeah. What are you talking about? Trailer people. Like, you don't see many people that just own trailers just because. Yeah, normally they have uses for the trailer. I have a use for my single blade. It shaves my face. Yeah, but you can tell, like, a trailer person. You're thinking about, like, something unnecessary. You go into a different world once you own a trailer. 
I'm not saying it's unnecessary. You're a little bit better of a man. You say, I have a trailer. Yeah. So it's like I was on Facebook Marketplace yesterday looking at trailers because I was like, I just think I feel like I need to own one. You have nothing to trailer around. That's the problem. So no one don't. owns a trailer in case. In case of be, what? In case you need it. For? Trailering and moving stuff. I do. Uh, have you ever moved stuff with it? Well, I have two trailers. See? Oh, that's, oh yeah. We're not, we're not hey. even getting into two trailer people. Yeah. yeah. They're really using them then. Yeah, that's fucking great. Because like, I was like, I'm going to buy this trailer. and I have no need for a trailer. I've never needed a trailer. Don't do it. Yeah. Because you have no need for it. Yeah. I need that blade because it shaves my face. Yeah. Look. Look. <laughs> but like I was driving past uh, Ace Hardware over here and there's a guy loading stuff onto a trailer. And I'm like, people with trailers are doing stuff. Like they're getting things done. Yeah. yeah. You see a guy with a trailer. He's got a project. He's got things to do. Yeah. Don't stop him. He's That's why it's like if I had a trailer, it's like I would not fit. You do stuff. You just don't need a trailer for it. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, I want to get to the point where I might need a trailer. I might buy one. I don't know. Start a landscaping business. Mm, I'm not that invested in the trailer world. Okay, well then it doesn't mean that much to you. So uh, don't. But, but yes, what's your experience with a one blade? All right. It takes the hair off. Really selling it. It, I mean, <laughs> it did. You can have one, and you can have six. Where did you get it? I mean, does it get? Online. Do you feel like it gives you a cleaner shave, a more comfortable shave? It does. Does it look? Is it like a handle, like a normal yep. one, with just one? Yep. Oh, so it doesn't. It's not like the one where you have to like. It looks like a butter knife, but like no, you know like the ones like that look like a cone. Knife? Yeah, and you gotta like drag it sideways. Yeah. No, mine is the one where it's it's double sided. It's like a rectangle like this uh, on top, yep. and then it's got the handle down here. And then you can just pop in a new one blade. Yeah. Gotcha. Like a leaf. Pretty much. Cool. Yeah. Couldn't. If you had asked me two years ago when I bought it, why I bought it, I probably would have told you, but now I don't know. It's just, mm. I just got it. I think it was like magnitudes cheaper to just buy those blades than the actual ones that have five and the cooling gel and the moisturizing after shit. And I'm just like, I hate those. Pivot, razors. I'm like, head. whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, we're yeah. going, we're going old school. I Toothbrush said, on the back end. Yeah. I said, one blade, just take the hair off. That's, face. See, this is the start of his Ted Kaczynski phase. You're right. He's I going back so. to the one blade that they used to do before technology came around. I think Ted Kaczynski let his face stuff go for a while. It's possible. Like 17 years probably because he yeah. sounds like a bearded man, doesn't he? Sounds a little grizzled. Can you tell like if someone gave you like a backstory about a person, you could tell if they're a beard person or not? Yeah, I think so. I try to imagine what they would look like a yeah. lot. And so if I was like, my friend John's loading sandbags onto a trailer. You I don't want know. me to describe him? No, tell know. me if he has a beard or not. Mm. Sandbags? No. Mm. I'm not thinking. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking not. he 100% has a beard. Because he's hauling sandbags? Just I'm hauling, not thinking like anything a big burly. I'm thinking maybe something like maybe some scruff, but yeah, it's a beard though. Is it okay? Well, if that's a beard, then yeah, yeah. I was thinking like you know, Duck Dynasty beard, maybe yeah, not to that different. extent. But I'm thinking who's that lumberjack? Paul Bunyan. Yeah, I'm thinking Paul Bunyan beard. I don't think Paul Bunyan had a beard. Definitely. So I'm thinking of a guy right now, and <laughs> he's doing some plumbing work at the school or wherever I'm at. Think he's got a beard? Plumber? Uh, no. Giant beard. So, there you go. Yeah, Paul Bunyan does not have a beard. Mustache and a pipe. But, pipe I don't too. know. I feel like, uh, actually, the, I should have said yes, because all the plumbers I know have beards. So, that was a Good majority of the ones that I work with, too. Miscalculation. Yeah. Not HVAC guys, though. No. <laughs> not a lot of beards in the HVAC world. Except that one dude that works with you. Can't. Shit gets sucked into the fan. Oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah. Not what the Your refrigeration. Does. All right. Let's talk HVAC about is Ted, yeah. Ted You know what's on the end of HVAC? An R. Cooler? H yeah. H V A C dash R. That is the actual. Yeah, dash R. Term. That's because you guys are all about your inclusivity bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're the uh, they're the Q on the end of on the end of LGBTQ. E e exactly. Uh you can try to be us, but you never <laughs> you can will. Try. Go bang some tin. You will tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow morning. Um. All right. So, 
So this is a pretty mind. bad guy, huh? Yeah, bad guy. Let's talk about uh, Manifesto. So he did write this, 35,000 pages. <laughs> Uh, kind of wrote it now. and distributed the manifesto with the hope of starting a revolution against industrial society. He had five main points, uh, critique of industrial technology society. He believes that modern society is increasingly resilient. No, increasingly re, uh, increasing reliance on technology threatens human freedom and is inherently unstable. He would be in a tiff. Right now. So he thinks people are just going to go soft like they did in Wally is his thing. Yeah. I forgot. I, you, soft and fat. I don't really remember Wally all that much. All those people are in the ship and they're in chairs and they never leave them. Oh, the yeah. The chairs roll around, do whatever. Yeah. I see floor. I see where he's coming from, but yeah. I would never try and seriously injure someone with a small bomb about it. <laughs> <laughs> what point? What would it have to get to, you know? What would be your thing? My breaking point? Well, what would be your thing that sets you into domestic terrorism? Hmm. Oh, man. That's a good one. Where do I begin? <laughs> How do Let I me choose? Start to pull some note out of his pocket. <laughs> yeah. What would drive me absolutely insane? What oh, would man. be the revolution where you're like, this is the thing that's just, it's got to change? I'm not exactly sure. Because, I mean, there's stuff already that happens where I catch myself talking like, a grandfather where I go, this is so stupid. Like these people nowadays with certain stuff is just a lot of shit pisses me off, but never to the point of putting a whoopee cushion in the mail or whatever. But yeah, my, mine would probably be people that don't pull into the intersection before they turn. Yes. Wow. Does that piss me off? Yeah. When I'm sitting in the turning lane up and he's sitting at the line and not halfway through, like, ready to turn. Yeah. I'm like, dude. If we go. could start planting bombs under the stop line, we never mind. Or, that. <laughs> how about when there's a left turn lane, a middle lane that's straight, another lane that's straight or right, and people, the left lane is open, but people are going straight and in the right the, on the right lane, but they could be in the left lane. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's preventing you from turning. Yeah. So you got to sit through that whole red light where there's no cars going that way, but you still can't go anyway. Doesn't bother me as much, but that does bother me. Yeah. Ketchup when you're eating steak, those people. Oh, that's that's insane. People being loud and just loud people. (laughs) People in Walmart. (laughs) <laughs> Walmart goers, oh, man. From, Walmart goers. It goes from people being loud to people that go to Walmart. <laughs> yeah, Walmart no. goers. Okay. Yeah, because there's no place in this entire world that I walk into an establishment and I immediately just become in a worse mood, just from being there because I know for the next however many minutes I'm gonna just be upset. It's disgust. Like yeah. you feel pure disgust and hatred for Walmart. Uh, just goers. Uh, 95% of Walmart goers. I just, yeah, you must struggle with them. Cause I like, I, I, blank I, them I, out like they're NPCs, you know, when they I can't, I can't because when you have all of your kids screaming and dancing in the center of the aisle and I'm trying to go and grab that thing of paper towels. Yeah. Please get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. It, at least have some courtesy to tell your kids, stop that. They're, they're the same people, people that don't pull into the intersection, Walmart people. Yeah, you could. Uh, yeah, you could probably take them out in one fell swoop. <laughs> Slow walkers. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. So to tie it into Easton's question, how many hours would you have to be trapped inside of a Walmart before you become a terrorist? Hours. One quarter of an hour. Uh, how about just take the S off the end of that <laughs> word? <laughs> Lower, dude. How many hour? <laughs> how much of an hour? Yeah, not hours, dude. Not hour. I think that's why I hate going shopping so much. Like if somebody would be like, I'm going to go to the mall. Do you want to come with? And it's like, what are you going for? Oh, I'm just going to go shop. No, no. I am not. in to grab something that I need and then I am out. Yeah. Please do not ask me to do that. That is one of the worst pastimes in all of history. I like a good walk around. Do that out in the neighborhood. Yeah. But there's not stores. For, for if I'm on, do you want to buy stuff? something? Yeah. I, or we're about to do it at the fair. It's the best time to do we're it. About yeah. to. <laughs> we're prepping our at least there, the binoculars. I'm going to get the greasiest bucket of cheese curds oh. and probably <sighs> the flowering onion, dude, some dad sodas. I'll get one of those. Yeah. Some mini donuts. Foot long corn dog. God, you guys are hopefully fair some, baiting uh, over here. Yeah. Dude, dude, I am amped. Hopefully there's a slight rain or a downpour even. 
So there's puddles next to people that oh, Liam can please. jump in and splash uh, other people with. Yeah. Worst guy to be around. Yeah. Uh, over socialization was point number two. He argues this breeds various mental disorders and creates individuals who are obedient and have a disdain for nonconformists. So he's over socializing. He thinks more people should go live in the woods. You guys would jump on board with him. I would. If you had a call. Yeah. Why not? Just uh, get rid of the blowing up. <laughs> Yeah, less like, less boomies. Yeah, let's just. Less, bo- less boomies. Uh, rejection of leftist ideals. Kaczynski criticizes modern leftist politics as being representative of the problems with industrial technological to technological. technological. Yep, technological society. Technological. I don't know why that. I ever thought that was the. You word. just put emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Technology and freedom. Kaczynski asserts that technology erodes human freedom and that it is impossible to reform the system while also making technological advances uh, and call for a revolution. The manifesto calls for a revolution against technology. Kaczynski believes that it's possible to overthrow the techno industrial system through force and encourages like minded individuals to take up his cause. Is he like saying more people should bomb? Yeah, why not? I mean, let's get rid of the bad ones. Let's reverse psychology, engineer, whatever you want to call it. Let's start doing bombs at the bad guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? But also be in the whole thing with living in the woods and shit in a hole. So he was, yeah, I don't know. I if feel he like comes he from a good bomb. place. However, his means, well, <laughs> his means, his, his ways of expression. Yeah. Were, yeah, it had all the makings it to be had good. All the makings, but just the actions that were carried out were he picked the wrong disagreeable, the wrong way to go about it. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. How about instead of bombs, we do pamphlets? Pamph- <laughs> you know what I mean? Spread awareness. It's yeah. harder to spread awareness with pamphlets. You know? Maybe. Yeah. They're not a lot. Of, not a lot of people are really. Getting the idea that we're trying to push across. You here. could be like those people in France. If you're trying to spread awareness about global warming, throw tomato soup on a 500 year old painting. That'll really get your point across. Did they do that? Yes. Yeah. Is it the real painting? Probably not. But still, I saw some people protesting a building, and they're just spraying orange paint all over the outside of it. Yeah. Yeah. Or people are gluing and... their hands to shit. Oh, I you know do how that. bad that's gonna that's hurt so when they dumb. rip you off of that. Yeah. I, glue my I, hands. Hope, I hope they used no solvent to get them off. Yeah. I hope they just pulled them off. Maybe just one wad of loogie. No solvent. <laughs> Not even on their hand. Just spit on their forehead and start yanking them off. What would you glue your hand to? Uh, my other hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Liam's shoulder. <laughs> In solidarity. Hey, this is my buddy. Hey. <laughs> just always be like, I'm spreading my- awareness about Liam. <laughs> Here's my yeah. pal. He's my buddy, and you guys should know him. That is all. Just fly fucking dude. Really? I'm dude. I'm waiting for I, him to get real close. Just like, oh, there he goes, dude. I'm waiting. I'm just gonna snatch and grab. What would you here. glue your hand to? This fly? <laughs> I'm about to. Oh, that was close. Snatch and grab. Little shit. If you, Mister Miyagi, this fly on the episode. Oh, I'd lose my mind. I lost him. Now he went down low. Oh, there he is up top. We can't do this. Oh, I'm not what that have been. Right in the camera. Yeah, that wouldn't. All right, all right. Episode time. Yeah. Ted Kaczynski. You know what? I think <laughs> uh, living in the woods is a nice idea. How he was caught. Do you guys know how he was caught? Um. Nope. <laughs> I don't. I, I like to think that uh, he was delivering a bomb and got arrested. I think they triangulated his location via bombs. That's actually a good guess, but no. Was it they just, just a good guess because it sounded the the like sounds cool. the address on all the packages? The return that, address? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like, know. Why do we go to this one. fucking guy's house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because like, the, all the bombs blew up, so they didn't. <laughs> they didn't know. That's true. Yeah. See, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um, I just picture it as like a jack in the box, like something comes up, and pops, pops out. Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Bomb. Um. That yeah. That makes sense. Why they couldn't just read the return address. Um, so he was apprehended due to a combination of diligent investigative work by the FBI and a tip from his own brother, David Kaczynski. Really? Yeah. It so they weren't in cahoots then. Fucking ratted him out. Hmm. Interesting. I think your own brothers would rat you guys out if they figured out. I think this is my brother doing this. No. 
No, probably not. I don't think so. I think my brother would ask how he could play a part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how can I help, man? Yeah. I'll go to McDonald's and get all the cardboard you need out of the back <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, yeah. Be like, what do you need at the hardware store? A box of nails. I need okay. gasoline and styrofoam, please. I need Fosgene. <laughs> and all the Fosgene you can handle. <laughs> uh, Find me some smithereens. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to blow these people to smithereens. We're going to go smithereening tonight. <laughs> A uh, crucial turning point came in 1995 when the Unabomber sent out a copy of his manifesto to several news outlets demanding it be published or he would continue his bombing campaign. New York Times and the Washington Post, in consultation with the FBI, decided to publish the manifesto, hoping it might lead to the Unabomber's identification. David Kaczynski, Ted's brother, saw the published manifesto and recognized similarities in the ideas and writing style to letters he had received from his brother. So similarities. I could never do that, man. He's like, yeah, these these are some of the ideas my brother had, actually. Hmm. He's I'm going to call him. <laughs> He's talking about this at Christmas last year. I wanted to blow a couple guys up. For yeah, I didn't know if he was being serious or not. It sounds pretty similar, though. Although conflicted, David felt a moral obligation to alert the authorities, fearing more people could be hurt. He hired a private investigator, confirmed his suspicions, and then contacted the FBI providing them with more letters written by Ted. So he handed over his letters. Forensic analysis confirmed that the author of the letters and the manifesto were likely the same person. Person, The linguistic style, along with details about Ted's background and the locations of the bombings, led the FBI to secure a search warrant for Kaczynski's cabin in Lincoln, Montana. And then they caught his ass. Lincoln. Searched in 1996, found a completed bomb, bomb components, an original typed copy of the manifesto in a fully written autobiography. The evidence was overwhelming and Kaczynski was arrested at his cabin. Indicted on 10 counts of illegally transporting, mailing, and using bombs. In 98, he pled guilty to all the charges and was sentenced to four life sentences plus 30 years without the possibility of parole. Why'd they tack on the 30 years? Uh, why'd they tack on uh, four and a half life sentences? Why tack on three, three more. more life sentences? Yeah, I suppose. Unless you're that guy that uh, Nathan's got it. I know this one. In case you... It's not for the criminal, it's for the victims. Uh, Let's say that your son died because of the Unabomber, and he only gets charged, with, or and like a bunch of other people did, but technically they do like the extra life sentences because your son, when he killed him, he got a life sentence for that. So every victim gets its own uh, equal... So, like, if, if you blow up 48 people, you might get 48 life sentences for yes. each person you blew up. Oh, because I guess each one's a separate crime. Yeah. It's a separate murder. Well, and it's just a human thing, kind of, too. Like, it's not to pay just like homage. if you blow up one person or 700 people, you're going to get different sentences because more lives are lost. Mm-hmm. How many people can you kill by the time they stop Seven. handing out another life sentence? <laughs> yeah. Five. <laughs> I'll let you know. Um... <laughs> I meant that I'll let you know, he <laughs> says. <laughs> well, he, uh, so I'm told. So I'm yeah, told. So I'm told. Um, yeah, he's like, once you blow up one, <laughs> might as well keep. Okay. There's the wheels once you get past now. 30, same prison time. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, blew him up. Where are we at? Autobiography. They caught him. Yeah. Lincoln, Montana. Uh, we should go there. David Kaczynski's brother has since become an advocate for mental health and victims' rights. He has expressed regret for his brother's actions in the position he was put in, but has stated that he believes he made the right decision. Yeah. Real nice brother. Tough to be at Thanksgiving with, though. Yeah, I wonder what the next year after that was like. Is he dead now, Ted Kaczynski? He's locked in a maximum security prison. Oh, he's still alive? As of, as of when I read this from the internet, yeah. We should see. If we can talk to him. If we, yeah, we could have a little meet up with him. We should have had episode him with him. Guess, yeah, I should have had him guest star. What would the audience have done? Imagine the listeners, first of all. Roll. We're like, yeah, this week's on the Unabomber, and then they just hear a voice. Yeah. And it's Ted Kaczynski. You guys are imagine you watching, though. We would quit our jobs. Imagine watching, and you see four people when you turn the whatever yeah. the episode on. And like, podcast. We just got a featuring a Zoom Ted call. Kaczynski. Yeah. <laughs> No, the he's Unibomber right featuring here. Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> yeah. No, he's like, we move Liam's chair over and there's four chairs like this. Yeah. So what's going on, dude? 
So Ted, what? How's, how's, you how's grow it going? Up? He's like, ah, he's a professor at UC Berkeley. He's dead. You guys got to stop talking about having him in the room. Did he die? Yeah, he died June tenth this year. Oh, what? Wow. Yeah, no shit. A month ago. Yeah. Wow. How did we miss that? Obviously, we don't care. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> he might be in the room with us right How'd now. How did he die? Uh, Someone sent him a beating. mail. A bomb Some, in the mail. Yeah. Possible suicide. So he must have had something to do with the Clintons. Uh, <laughs> I said clit. <laughs> um, <laughs> got him. Um, <laughs> what, what the, the hell? hell? <laughs> uh, interesting facts. Uh, makeshift workshop in his isolated cabin. Kaczynski used a workbench made from a wooden plank and a car jack to construct his bombs. You got to be pretty smart what? though to figure this out because well, no, like, he clearly YouTube was. Then. He used what? A wooden plank and a car jack? Yeah. To do what? To make the bombs. How does that make any sense? That was his workbench. A wooden plank. And the car jack. That's, That's what it? he just said. I couldn't fashion up three more two by fours or something and just make a table. Couldn't. Professor? Professor. <laughs> 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 Mr. Kaczynski? Dude, not, not much of a construction guy, I guess. No, he was a math guy. He just needed a flat surface. Yeah, dude, like 38 inches for each leg and a full board. And <laughs> you could you wire a whole bomb. But couldn't figure out how to Table. put a screw in a couple of boards. I wonder Table. how he figured out how to do the bomb. Because there's like no YouTube back then. Oh, it's it's not hard. Trial and error, obviously, because his bombs weren't very bomby. No, oh, yeah. It took him seven years, though, before he killed someone? Yeah. Well, you, you would have... You sound, hypo- hypothetically. You sound like you could make a bomb out of stuff in my garage right now, Liam. I don't know what you have in your garage. So, no. I could make napalm. How? Uh, gasoline and I think yeah all you need so is I've gasoline heard. and styrofoam so I've heard you dissolve the styrofoam and gasoline we do not condone doing this don't do it do not these actions this. are performed by experts we've never done it and we never will we never will but we've heard from people yeah. Men- mental health uh, during his trial Kaczynski was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia but he resisted the diagnosis and tried to prevent his lawyers from using it as part of his defense um, jury selection during his trial, Kaczynski tried to reject any jurors who admitted to using the internet because of his opposition to technology. Get it? Almost. Almost. So <laughs> he, trying. no, I, Lots more tries. I respect that kind of, he was like, I'm not crazy. Like I literally hate this shit and I will kill people about it. <laughs> he's, he's going down with it, dude. <laughs> he called his face. He's like, God, oh, fuck. And hate this and I'm going to kill people and that's how much I hate it man <laughs> it's just how bad this shit is man I will kill all of you about it even you judge like, <laughs> you're not safe <laughs> like if you're gonna lock me up do yeah, it exactly. cause I'm not crazy I killed my last attorney <laughs> cause he was searching shit on the internet yeah even you judge <laughs> I'll fucking kill you, you too judge. bitch I'm you know willing, what I mean? I'm willing to kill I have to respect it. that. Yeah, hey. He had conviction. Captain goes down with his shit, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this shit. Oh, fuck. All right. Influence on literature. The Unabomber Manifesto is referenced in several dystopian novels and has influenced numerous eco critical and techno critical texts. Boring fact right there. Few musicians, such as British band Muse, have cited Kaczynski as an influence on some of their work. That'd be tough to be influenced by him. Hmm. Why'd you write this song? Ugh. You know who Ted Kaczynski is? Yeah. One of my models, my role models. Uh, hand-carved items. Kaczynski carved various items like knives and flutes from wood while living in his cabin, demonstrating a high level of craft- craftsmanship. You probably have a dual bevel. Miter saw. Him? Yeah. I don't too know. much. Too much technology. Too much. This guy is borderline Amish. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah. We're trend the, we're trend the line. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Making his own flute. What was the other thing? Knife or something like that? Yep. Knife handle? Items like knives and flutes. Hmm. You think he just got bored and he's like, I got to make a fucking flute or something? I'm so tired this? of bombs right now. <laughs> I've, I've made like seven already. I just want to play the flute for a little while. 
<laughs> he's got so, it hanging out of his mouth like a, a cigarette as he's building the bomb, just playing the flute. That's yeah, a that shot. is a shot. Yeah. Uh, imagine walking through the woods in Montana and you just hear a flute. I'd freak. I would freak out. And then you watch a guy walk out of a shed like that. That's about when I start screaming, help. I yeah. think there was a thing I'd say, mayday, mayday. Uh, I think there was a thing uh, where someone, like, they almost caught him. Someone saw his cabin or something and thought it was suspicious, but they didn't report anything. Like, years prior. Really? You should see, Nathan, if you can find that. Um, Brothers Advocacy. Uh, David Kaczynski became an advocate for the... Uh, what is that word? App. Abolish. Abolition. How do you pronounce it? Abolish. Abolishment. Abolition. Abolition. Is that how you say it? Abolition. What, what is it? It's abolition of the death penalty, but abolition. I'm yeah, looking to at abolish it. something. Yeah, the yeah. I know what it means, but abolition. Abolition. It doesn't sound right. That's because normally you'd say abolishment. Abolishment. Yeah. For the yeah. abolishment of the death penalty after turning in his brother. Uh, he had a prison hobby. Do you want to guess what it was? <laughs> uh, Why do you smirk? <laughs> he played slapjack. I'm going to say wood carving. Nope. Uh, spends his time in prison reading and has reportedly become quite a fan of the Harry Potter series. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's all. That's all was. It says. Was. Yeah. Prison correspondence. Kaczynski corresponded with over 400 people from his prison cell including several renowned scholars. Uh, document auction. In an attempt to pay off his victims, the U.S. government auctioned off Kaczynski's original handwritten manifesto in 2011. Who would be buying what that? What a Who? twisted thing to do. Who bought it? Nathan? Bought what? Who bought the original copy of the Unabomber the manifesto? Unabomber manifesto. Uh, the courtroom sketch artist for Kaczynski's trial was instructed not to sketch Kaczynski's shackles to prevent bias among the viewers. Do they usually do that? What do you mean? Like he was obviously in shackles. Well, he was course. already arrested, right? Yeah. But I think sometimes when they're super crazy and do bad shit, they go into court wearing their handcuffs and shit. Yeah. He was probably one you wanted to lock him up a little bit. It would make sense. Right. Yeah. He's a crafty fellow, so. He was a hell of a carpenter, he'd, too. Yeah, he'd pick those locks in no time. Uh, handwritten petition. Kaczynski submitted a handwritten Supreme Court petition in 2012 challenging the constitutionality. Fuck. Words are so hard today. Challenging the constitutionality of his imprisonment. It was denied. How can what is, I How can he challenge that. killing people and say, I'm wrongfully in prison? He's like, this is unconstitutional right now. Mm-hmm. That's how much he believed that technology was bad, I guess. He just thought he was doing everybody a favor, and that's almost delusional. Yeah. You, do you think you're born with this craziness? No. Mm. There might be some, like, predisposition genetically, but I think shit that happens to you is what? So you think anyone can become a Unabomber? It's like, na- it's like nature and nurture. I think deal? anybody could, but the chances for some people are higher and lower based on... What they experience, yeah. What life. they experience and what their genetics are, yeah. You know, yeah. If, yeah, if I was a child and my dad was covered in tattoos and beat the shit out of me, can probably bet right. I wouldn't have any tattoos when I grew up. Yeah, if, if you got in trouble for going on your phone as a kid, yeah, and it was indoctrinated to you, yeah. Well, they didn't even might, have, did they even have phones? Did they have phones? It was in the seventies. Yeah, Early uh, they had phones. I yeah, don't know if they, they had cell phones. I don't know when the first cell phone came out. Probably like the 80s. 90s. 2000s. 2010s. Yeah. I had my first cell phone in my fifth grade. In my fifth grade. In my, not your guys' <laughs> fifth grade. In my fifth grade. Uh, it'd be better if you use Broden's. In like, Broden's fourth yeah. grade. So I was fifth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Got my first. In, when you guys were in fourth grade, I yeah. had my first cell phone. I got my first one in Broden's twenty fourth year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Go ahead. Okay, first phone was April third, nineteen seventy three. Okay, for and phone then, that's not like not mobile, like but that's not yeah. I mean, no, the first, first phone, phone was box it? phones. First handheld mobile phone was demonstrated by Martin Cooper of Motorola. Nineteen seventy three, and mm-hmm. it looked like a box, like a 
It was, a it was like it was like a satchel. Yeah, dude. just a thick a brick. Board. It yeah. looked like the things you use in old war movies. And then there is no original copy of it. It wasn't saved, but there are copies of the manifesto along with the Unabomber's other writings at the uh, Labadi Le- collection. I don't know exactly where that is. Me neither. It's and then um, at the Vatican, how much Taj Mahal, the Vatican? Did it say how much? There too. They auctioned yeah, off for it. <laughs> Pass it back. No <laughs> joint custody. Well, like I don't know if like they were saved. Well, yeah, but they had an auction with a copy of it. Type right? in Unabomber Manifesto auction. Okay, well, yeah. let me let me get through some stuff first. All right, and then his cabin in the woods. It wasn't like a secret thing. Like the locals knew he was there. He was like a harmless guy. And like he'd actually like catch rides so they from thought. the people there. <laughs> he'd actually be he'd, what? He'd catch rides from people in town. Yeah, like he he like was a part of the town. Yeah, he I yeah because he used to go into the town and play shuffleboard and stuff. Yeah, went went into the, <laughs> yeah. the <laughs> play stuff. He was an avid member of the Legion Club and would go and play pool every yeah. Thursday night. The Knights of Columbus. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there is there was a Unabomber auction for some of his stuff, and he netted like hundred ninety thousand dollars from it. He Damn. didn't. He didn't net fuck no, all. The yeah. Gov- <laughs> the government. The government did. did yeah. yeah. He netted one ninety. They sent it to his. Uh, what do they call it in prison? Solitary confinement. No, head of the room account. It's- oh yeah, I know oh, what you're yeah. talking about. His bankroll or something, whatever. Prison wallet. No, what is that called? $190,000 <laughs> in his ass. <laughs> what is that? Okay, you got to figure out what it's called. Your, uh, well, your what account, your account for the canteen in, in prison. Your account for the canteen. Your account, like you have a bank account with money in it to buy shit at like a little shop in prison. Right. Hmm. You that, know what like, I'm talking that's about? That's like, yes, that's where like when you work in prison, like they have prisoners the going C. out picking up oh, trash. Right. They pay them 80 the, cents a day uh, or whatever. It's like your... Hang on, don't com- say it yet. Don't, don't commissary? Say it. Commissary. commissary. Yes. Yes. Is that what it is? Commissary yeah. account. <laughs> you got it before me. Nice. I knew it started the C, though. He, or yeah. did you? I, I'll yeah, take I it. I think you did. Yeah, I got it. You said it. I'm sorry. Actually, yeah. I'm going to take that back and give it to him. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. All right. That's all we got for the Unabomber. That's the Unabomber. He... Crazy. He was bad. He was a bad dude. Yeah. Let us know your favorite bad guy. Please. Yeah, please leave any comment. <laughs> please uh how we're still gonna do episodes even if you don't so it's whatever yeah um a little bit of a shorter one today long weekend for the boys yeah. but we'll be back next week i'll be in vegas but we'll figure it out yeah can't wait we love interacting with you guys so interact with us peace out and sign off <laughs>